What shall we do with the broke propeller? What shall we do with the broke propeller? Don't look at me, I wasn't driving. Thank you, you're not helping. I don't even know why you bought this boat. You told me that you loved this boat. That was before you wrecked the boat. Well, now you've made it awkward. Accidents don't just happen in sea shanties, so Progressive Boat Insurance has you covered. Take as little as four minutes to see what you can save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates covered subject to policy terms and not available for all boats or in all situations. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2276. What is the debt ceiling crisis and eight ways to prepare for possible fallout? By Kathleen Coxwell of newretirement.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Thanks so much for tuning in today for our very first Monday Mastery edition of Optimal Finance Daily, where I'll read an article for you that digs a little deeper than most others and touches upon an area of personal finance that many don't know about. So with that, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. What is the debt ceiling crisis and eight ways to prepare for possible fallout? By Kathleen Coxwell of newretirement.com. The ceiling is falling, the ceiling is falling. It's hard to know if the news of the debt ceiling is akin to Chicken Little's misunderstanding or an actual looming crisis. In the story of Chicken Little, an acorn hits her head and she mistakes it as a sign that the sky is falling and she spreads hysteria throughout the countryside. Let's explore what's going on with the debt ceiling, catastrophe or unwarranted panic, and how to prepare for what may come. What is a debt ceiling? Who sets the limits? The debt ceiling is the limit on the amount of money that the federal government is authorized to borrow from U.S. Treasury securities like savings bonds. Congress authorizes the borrowing by setting a limit on how much the government can borrow. Quote, Alexander Hamilton started the U.S. Treasury with nothing, and that is the closest our country has ever been to being even. Will Rogers. What is a debt ceiling crisis? When people talk of the debt ceiling crisis, they're referring to a scenario where the U.S. government is unable to make the required payments to their creditors, bondholders, without breaking through the debt ceiling. The crisis is that the government cannot make payments on the debts. Because the U.S. financial system is not just the gold standard, but the standard for practically all financial assets in the world, default on these debts is hard to imagine. The ramifications are unsettling. Treasury debt has always been thought of as risk-free. Note, according to the New York Times and all previous debt ceiling crises, the world's investors have paradoxically actually put more money into the treasury, believing that it's still a safer place to put money than other options in a crisis. How can the debt ceiling crisis be avoided? Historically, Congress has always simply raised the debt ceiling, which eliminated the crisis and any threat of financial meltdown. According to the Treasury, Congress has always acted when called upon to raise the debt limit. Since 1960, Congress has enacted 78 separate times to permanently raise, temporarily extend, or revise the definition of the debt limit. 49 times under Republican presidents and 29 times under Democratic presidents. Congressional leaders in both parties have recognized that this is necessary. However, the fear this year is that the gulf in Congress between those who are willing to raise the debt limit and those who want to make cuts to government spending before they are willing to raise the limit is wider than it's ever been before. So this story may be less about chicken little and more a game of chicken. Who's willing to compromise first and to what degree in order to avoid a debt ceiling crisis? Changes to Social Security and Medicare and finding ways to make the program solvent are likely to be on the negotiating table. Will the debt ceiling actually be breached? Well, yes. We technically hit the limit on January 19th. However, the Treasury Department can use creative accounting to be able to continue paying the government's bills. Experts warn that these maneuvers will be exhausted by June the date of actual default is being called the X date. What will happen on the X date, an actual debt ceiling crisis? Well, we don't really know. It's never happened before. 
What should you do to protect your finances from a debt limit breach? A debt ceiling crisis isn't so different from any other threat to your assets. Experts recommend the tried and true strategies for major fluctuations in the financial markets. Number one, don't panic. If you have a long-term investment strategy in place and adequate cash on hand, you probably don't need to worry. We've weathered downturns before and have been muddling through some pretty big financial shocks over the last few years. And there's no reason to believe that this possible crisis will be any different. Number two, prepare mentally for investment declines. The emotional impact of losses, even losses that you know are short-term, can be difficult. Prepare yourself mentally, have backup plans in place, and keep your eye on your long-term financial health. Understanding your emotions and keeping your eye on the big picture can mitigate bad decision-making in a crisis. Number three, bolster your cash emergency funds. Experts recommend that everyone has adequate cash on hand to fund their expenses for anywhere between three months to five years. Your specific time horizon depends on the reliability of your income sources. Number four, have a long-term investment strategy. The crisis may or may not happen. However, the machinations of business will march forward. If you believe that there is value in the businesses in your investment portfolio and that people and businesses will continue to build additional value, then stick to your long-term investment strategy. The debt ceiling crisis will probably be just another blip. The financial markets have always recovered and exceeded previous crises. Number five, if you're a government employee, social security recipient, and or Medicare beneficiary, you may wanna plan for a pause in payments. It's not clear who will get paid if we crash through the X date without raising the debt ceiling. So if you receive income or benefits from the federal government, you may wanna consider and plan for how to cope if those payments are not made. If you're worried, you may wanna run a scenario in the new retirement planner where you pause your government check for a specified period of time and address ways to bridge to restored compensation. Number six, be prepared for increases in borrowing costs. The debt ceiling crisis may cause interest rates for treasuries to rise, which would then increase interest rates across the rest of the economy. The costs of borrowing, credit cards, car loans, mortgages, business investments, etc., will rise. If you have variable interest rates on debt, now may be a good time to lock in fixed rates. Number seven, haven't yet started Social Security or Medicare? Consider how a future reduction in benefits might impact your projections. There's talk that members of Congress will use the debt ceiling crisis to force a reckoning for the solvency of Social Security and Medicare. Ideas that have been considered include raising the age for eligibility, changing the way cost of living adjustments are made, making benefits means tested through the middle class, and more. If you've already started benefits, it's unlikely that anything will change for you. If you've not already started benefits, you may want to consider a possible reduction. And number eight, contact your congressional representatives. Have concerns? Contact your congressional representatives. Voting is not the only way to make your voice heard. You just listened to the post titled, What is the Debt Ceiling Crisis? And Eight Ways to Prepare for Possible Fallout by Kathleen Coxwell of NewRetirement.com. Smoothie King asks, what's that sound? That's the sound of hearts popping out of your eyes when you see Smoothie King's all-new Smoothie Bowls. These Power Pack beauties are just waiting to be spooned. Our Smoothie Bowls start with acai or pitaya and are handcrafted with fresh toppings like sliced bananas, sweet berries, ripe mangoes, crunchy purely Elizabeth granola, and a savory peanut butter drizzle. Mmm, that's the sound of a Smoothie Bowl being made fresh just for you. The new Smoothie Bowls menu, only at Smoothie King. It's springtime, the sun is coming out, and that means you're going to want as much time and energy as possible to enjoy the outdoors. Introducing our sponsor, Factor. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and can help you fuel up fast with ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and tackle everything on your to-do list. With Factor, skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. 
and with over 34 chef prepared dietitian approved weekly options they have meals to fit any diet or lifestyle including keto vegan and veggie protein plus and calorie smart which have around or less than 550 calories per serving head to factormeals.com/ofd50 and use code OFD50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code OFD50 at factormeals.com slash OFD50 to get 50% off your first box. I like to maintain the mindset of focusing on things I can control, and the debt ceiling crisis is not one of those things. I thought this article offered some good pointers on navigating the uncertainty of external factors in general but it did get me curious about the purpose of the debt ceiling and what economists have to say about it. Louise Shiner, Economic Studies Policy Director at the Hutchins Center on Fiscal and Monetary Policy, actually testified to Congress that they should abolish the debt ceiling. Her argument is that it serves no purpose and has not imposed any fiscal discipline on Congress. She says, quote, the debt limit is a political roadblock that when reached prevents the federal government from fulfilling its already incurred obligations. It's like spending money and refusing to pay the credit card bill. There is little evidence that debt ceiling impasses have led to any long-term fiscal restraint. At a minimum, the possibility that the federal government will not honor its debt obligations undermines confidence in the U.S. economy and in our political institutions. The questions of how to address our long-term fiscal sustainability problem, when changes should be made, what is the mix of spending cuts and tax increases we need, which specific policies are best, are complicated and require careful deliberation. These types of fundamental policy decisions shouldn't be made in a hurry because the economy is being held hostage. Instead, Congress should confront tax and spending issues directly not as a byproduct to lifting the debt ceiling, end quote. That brings us to the end of today's episode, though. Thank you so much for listening all the way through, and I'll catch you tomorrow on our next episode, where your optimal life awaits.